Advanced Care Planning – Information for Older Adults Advanced Care Planning is a process of making choices about the health care you would want to receive if you get very sick. It allows you to make decisions about how you would want to be treated if you are not well enough to voice them on your own. These are your decisions to be made based on your values, your personal preferences, your experiences, and your discussion with loved ones. It can be difficult to start thinking about this, and you are not alone if you're having trouble taking the first step. A survey from 2013 showed that 90% of adults say talking about end-of-life decisions is important, but only 30% actually talk about it. And 82% say it's important to put their wishes into writing, but only 23% actually put them into writing. But it can be comforting to know that planning these things early can help family members and friends carry out the wishes of their loved ones, and it even allows them to grieve better knowing that they did what their loved one would have wanted. Honoring Choices Virginia walks through three steps to advanced care planning. They are think, talk, and plan. Step one is to think. What does living well mean to you? Does living well mean having more days or having more life in your days? Some key questions to reflect on include, what does a good day include? What makes your life worth living? How does your current health status influence the type of care you would want? Think about past medical experiences of you or a loved one. What did you like and not like about the medical care? The second part of step one is to think about who you would want to speak for you during a health care decision if you were too sick to make them yourself. This is called a medical decision maker or a health care agent. In Virginia, if you do not have an advanced care plan written out, the medical decision maker is automatically your closest living relative. This could be your spouse, your brother or sister, your son or daughter. When you make an advanced care plan, you can choose who you'd want your medical decision maker to be. This could be a family member or a close friend. Your medical decision maker should be someone you can talk to about what you want in your health care plan. It should be someone that you can trust to carry out your wishes, even if they do not have the same wishes for themselves. And it should be someone who is able to understand your medical situation and will ask questions and speak up to doctors and family about your wishes. They can make decisions including agreeing to, saying no to, stopping or choosing, the doctors, nurses, and social workers that work with you, which hospitals, clinics, or nursing homes you will stay at, medications, tests, treatments, life support treatments including breathing machines, CPR, dialysis, feeding tube, blood transfusions and surgery, and end-of-life care which could include calling in a spiritual leader or deciding if the home or the hospital is a better place for end-of-life care. These decisions really revolve around how to make you as comfortable as possible towards the end of life. Step two is to talk. Ask the person you are thinking about making your medical decision maker if they will serve in this role. Give them the info and listen to their thoughts. Share what is important to you with those you love and those in your support network. Example conversation starters include, My health is good right now, but I want to talk to you about what I'd want if I was sick and needed you to make decisions for me. Or, My doctor wants me to think about my future care and to make an advanced care plan. Will you help me? Step three is to plan. Put your choices into writing so your family, friends, and doctors know your choices regarding your health care. The legal form to be filled out is called an advanced medical directive. There are three major parts of an advanced medical directive. They include naming your medical decision maker, making health care choices for certain situations. This can include which treatments you would want or which ones you would not want, what sort of life support preferences you have, and any decisions about end-of-life care. And the last part of the form is a signature. In the state of Virginia, you need two witnesses present while you are signing the form in order to make it valid. These two witnesses cannot include the person that you choose as your medical decision maker. Make sure your document is stored in an accessible place. You may also want to share copies of your advanced medical directive with your medical decision maker, your loved ones, 
your primary care physician, and even the hospital of your choice. Revisit your advanced medical directive often. Nothing is set in stone, so if you change your mind about your choices for your medical care, you can change this on your document. Getting started can be the most difficult part, but remember that you don't have to have all your decisions made in order to get started. Just by beginning to think about your advanced care plan is a great first step. If you have questions or are ready to start thinking about your advanced care plan, ask at your next RHWP wellness check.